so i have opened up a uh, default blender scene and before working on any model just make sure that your units are correct to the real world units you don't want a 10 feet long couch so as you can see that the length is about 145 to about 190 centimeters so we just need to keep that in mind when we're modeling and by the way we're just trying to create this model that i found online so let's get started as you can see that we're using metric units I mean one of these cell is about one meter long so two is about two meters and so on I'll start off by going into the edit mode and I select the side of, of the cube reduce this on the x-axis about 20 centimeters and I select all of that and I moved it 10 centimeters to the right so that the origin is at the middle and then what I did was I select everything and I moved it up so that it sits on the floor now in the reference image as you can see that the depth is about 70 to 80 centimeters so what I did was I select the back face and, and I pull just in, pull it in and I did the same thing from the front one so that it was about 80 centimeters. And for the height what I did was I choose about 20 to 30 centimeters. By the way guys make sure that you save your blender file every five minutes or so because it crashes a lot or if you are a real man and you didn't want to save like you don't want to waste your time pressing the control s button every five minutes and losing about 50 milliseconds or so then i think you shouldn't save <laughs> jokes aside then what i did was i select one of these sides and i press shift d for duplicating that and then i press p for separating that object by selection so we got a separate object by itself. Then what I did was I tapped into edit mode and then I extruded to about 20 centimeters to the right. Then I select the top face and extruded about 20 centimeters. Then I select the left one and extruded until it reaches the center. And I deleted the face so that I can apply a mirror modifier and it be mirrored to the other side. And we don't need to do the same thing twice. After that, I just selected those top faces and I grabbed them towards the z-axis and move it up until it looks similar to the reference image that I got here, as you can see. But you can see that we got hard edges there, but in the reference image, it's not that hard. It's kind of beveled a little bit. So for that, we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier. We could use bevel modifier, but you ain't gonna get the resolution needed for doing the sculpting. So that's why we're gonna use the subdivision surface modifier. So after adding the subdivision surface, you can see that everything looks kind of weird. So what I did was I added some loop cuts and I tightened these things up until it looks similar to the reference image. And then I did the same thing for the base. I added a subdivision surface modifier, cranking up those values and added um, loop cuts along the X, Y and Z axis and tightened those up until it looks kind of similar to the reference image. And then I duplicated the base and moved that up along the Z axis. And then we went into the wireframe mode because otherwise you, won't, uh, you can't select the back faces. So by pressing Z, we go into wireframe mode, we select one side of that and we grab that and move that along the x-axis until we reach the middle. After that I added a mirror modifier to duplicate that thing to the other side. Now comparing with the reference image we got some thick pillows there. So we need to make it thinner and to do that I just select those base, tap into edit mode, I select the top faces and then I just grab them a little below there and we just make this thing thinner and I did the same thing for the pillows now to make the pillow inflate what I did was I selected the top face in the middle and I grabbed that and moved that along the z-axis to make it inflate and then what I did was I do the same thing on the bottom face to make it inflate on both top and bottom sides and to make those pillows in the back I duplicated the pillows that we recently made and I tapped into edit mode, I select the 
faces on that side and I just make it smaller by grabbing them and moving in them along the Y axis. And then after doing so, we just rotate that along the X axis and I place them where they should be. We go into edge select mode and select this edge by pressing Alt and then left click. Then just grab them down on the Z axis and do the same thing on the other side so that it kind of falls perfectly. And then I mm, try to make the sides a little bit thinner so I just go into edit mode, go into drop view, I select those sides and grab them a little closer and do the same thing from the top and from the you know the side as well. Now you can skip this part if you want uh, it was just for my test a little bit thicker so what I did was I make them thin but if you like that thicker one you could keep that. By the way, one thing that I really forgot was that make sure you're using smooth shading for all these objects. So you just press right click and select smooth shading for the for everything basically. We've done our base modeling and now is a good time to add those legs. So for legs, we just uh, before doing before adding those legs, what I did was I select everything and I moved them up a little and then I added a cube and then just scale it down until it looks like a leg and then I just place them where they should be and then what I did was I tried to select those edge loops and make them a little bit tighter because uh, the edges was a bit too smooth for me after doing that what I was trying to do was to add those stitches along the pillows for that I added a loop cut make it way closer to the other loop cut and then I select those face ring by pressing alt and then selecting that press E for extrude and then I press right click so it isn't done any extrusion but we did get the face and then I press alt s for scaling that and we scale it a little bit outside of that and I did the same thing for the top and we got both stitches but after adding those uh, stitches those two pillars were clipping through so what I did was I go into edit mode and then scale them a little bit smaller on the x-axis and that fixed the issue and then I tried to make the model look similar to the reference image that I got and for that I just make those sides a little bit smaller and those pillows a little bit smaller by the way to clear the rotation of the pillow you just need to press alt and then R so that the pillows will be set to their default position which was 0 0 0 on all axis and then I just scale them a little bit in and, and rotate them again and I fit them And then I applied all of the subdivision surface modifiers but for the base what I did was I added a loop cut on the middle and I delete half of the portion on the right and then add a mirror modifier so that we have half of the vertices to work with. And then I opened up the shader editor on the right and I added that texture and plugged the color to the base color. But you can see that the texture isn't looking quite right. That is because we need to unwrap that. Before unwrap, what I did was I select all those objects besides the legs and then join them into a single object. After that, I just tapped into edit mode, select everything and then press U, Smart UV Project. Now it might take a little bit of time depending on your hardware because there's a lot of vertices to work with. After that's done you can see that the texture is looking perfectly fine but the scale is a little bit larger. I mean not a little but a, a lot bigger. So what I did was I added a texture coordinate node and a vector mapping node and I plugged those and I increased that size to about 20 but uh, later I found that about 15 was fine so we could use 15 and uh, for the bumpiness what I did was I added a bump node and I plugged the color to the height and the normal to the normal of the principal shader and we got a bumpiness but but as you can see that the bumpiness is a little bit too much so I choose about 0.1 uh, in the strength and then for the roughness what I did was instead of choosing a fixed roughness value I 
used that color and plugged it into a color ramp node and make the output to derive the roughness and then I just tweak with these values but you can use a single value if you like and for the legs I just use that principal shader and I choose a color of like a wooden brownish darkish color and I apply the same material for all the other legs and that's it so our modeling is done but if you wanted to add some more details to those edges and stuff like that you're gonna have to do a little bit of sculpting now we select the sculpting mode on the top and go into sculpting mode and then I use the clay strip brush and I just make sure that it's on the subtract mode and then what I did was I pressed F and we make it smaller like that and I kind of drag it on top of the mesh on the corners to make that stitch and uh, you just need to do that for the other side as well and until it looks kind of good The pillars were a little bit too smooth so what I did was I select the draw brush and I added a little bit of bump on top of the pillar. And then I just smoothed that out using the smoothing brush. I mean smoothing brush. Smoothing brush. Okay. Then what I did was I tried to make those stitches along those pillows so I just did the same thing and yeah we got a stitch along the pillow. Then to add a little bit of wrinkles on these couches what I did was I select the draw brush and I subtract that by pressing control and then just dragging and uh, we might need to change the strength if you think that it's a little bit too much and then I just use the smoothing the smooth press to smooth that out so yeah we are done by the way guys if you have any kind of problem following this tutorial you can ask me on the comments below i can i will answer them and if you like my content please make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button as well so that you won't miss any of my future videos and thanks for watching